I used to sit in this little apartment, and it was a room. As a matter of fact, the room was so small, I remember I was able to open up the window and close the door while sitting on the bed at the same time. It was like eight feet by eight feet by nine feet. And, but the one thing about that room, there was really very little distraction. So I would sit there, propped up in bed, and I'd go out with my big pen and, and legal pad and just start writing these, these stories. And, and most of them were, were, were very, very trivial. But there was something about the process of unrealized dreams. I was always brought back to this subject because I think it's one of the most enduring subjects and one of the most difficult passages for people to accept that they never were realized in their own lifetime, that they just didn't get that shot. And one night, I went to see uh, Muhammad Ali fight. One brief moment, this supposed Stumblebum turned out to be magnificent in the fact that he lasted and knocked the champion down. I said, boy, if this isn't a metaphor for life, his entire life crystallized at that moment. He will be remembered for all eternity, at least uh, uh, among the fight fans. He did something extraordinary. I said, now that, that is probably what I need as a catalyst for an idea. A man who's going to stand up to life and take one shot and maybe go the distance. So I started to write. And it was one of those writing frenzies. And three days later, I came up with the script of Rocky. Now the script, by no means, was a finished piece of material. It was probably about 90 pages, and maybe 10% of it remained in the final script. But it was done. Originally in Rocky, the film was very, very dark, because filmed at that time, the anti-hero was... I guess the the favored kind of character of the day. You know, he didn't have the kind of uh, attitude that eventually he ended up with. So I went back and rewrote and rewrote and rewrote. Originally, when I brought the script to them, they were fairly enthusiastic about it. The one thing they were not enthusiastic about was me playing the part, and, and I really can't blame them. At the time, Ryan O'Neill was a, a candidate, Burt Reynolds, Robert Redford, Jimmy Kahn, and they all you know, were, were at the top of their game. And so I could see it, but there was something inside of me that, that you know, this opportunity is never going to come around. And I really wasn't used to money, and I had no idea of what I would be missing. But the temptation started to come forward. First it was uh, 25 grand, then $100,000. I never heard of 100000 because I had had like 160000 dollars in the bank and like I said I had to sell my dog and things were not looking very very good uh, my $40 car had just blown up so I was taking a bus to work and but still it, it didn't matter I wanted to stick with it then it went up to 150,000 175,000 it went up to 250,000 now my head was starting to spin and it went up to 330,000 and probably I heard it went up to 360,000 and I thought all right you know You've really managed poverty very well. You've got this down to a science. You really don't need much to live on. If I, I know in the back of my mind, if I sell this script and it does very, very well, I'm going to jump off a building. And if I'm not in it, there's no doubt about it, I'm going to leap in front of a train. So this is one of those things where you just roll the dice and you fly by the proverbial seat of your pants. Say, All right, I got to try it. I got to just do it. I may be totally wrong. And I'm going to be taking a lot of people down with me, but I just believe in it. And I was starting to get, you know, phone calls from very, very celebrated people around town. I said, wow, this could be it. This actually is going to work. Now, you understand, because I, I really had no true confidence in it because I had no, no film history, no real film knowledge. I was just working from, I guess, instinct. So often I had gone to uh, fight films and our sporting films. Yes, we're gonna go out there, we're gonna knock them out, you're gonna win. I said, no, no, because I'm not gonna win. I'm going to get destroyed. But if I can just be lucid, if I can still be standing on my feet, you know what, then life isn't so bad. And I think, again, symbolically, at the very end of our lives, if we can still say, you know, we were never humbled, we were knocked down, but we got up, and I can say, 
I lived life with integrity and I took all the blows, as the song says, and I'm, I still prevailed. I think that's, a, that's a, a good epitaph for anyone, and that's what I tried to capture in this film. But more importantly, I also realized that you can't be alone. To really succeed, no man really is an island. When you find the right components in your life, the right people that gel with you, then you feel as though you, you're invincible. <laughs>